Hello, I'm Martin Fenska and welcome to the first episode of another of my Civilization V Vox Populi series. So as usual, because this is the first episode of a new series, it's going to be more like an introduction. Uh, we'll start by checking the mods that we're going to be using, then I'll show you the map settings, and in the end, we'll check three different starting locations, and it's going to be up to you to decide which of them we're going to be using for this series. Before we do any of that, though, I would like to thank you for all your support. I really appreciate it, especially this year. It made a huge difference. So thank you for all your donations, but also comments, likes, all of that makes a huge difference. Once again, thank you very much for all of that. Now, uh, to focus on today's video, where do we start? I guess we start with the, uh, with the mods. As usual, we're going to be using the complete Vox Populi package, the latest version from the, I think it was 7th, I'm not sure if it was 7th or 8th of uh, October. Of course, there are going to be links to all the mods in the description so you can download them. Mm, and it's with the hotfix. So it's the version, I think it's a 7.10.2, that's the version. But as I said, there is going to be a link and I think there is only one file for download at the moment. So it should be pretty easy to get the right version. Uh, for the third and fourth unique component that we also uh, that we are also gonna use, it's version, I think it's version 59, but yeah, there is gonna be a link, so you should be able to get the right version pretty easily. Uh, and it's for for those of you who want to play with me, I'll of course make all the save files available. So if you want to use them, please make sure you have the same versions as I'm using. Uh, so that's the mods, and now we can check uh, the setup. As you can see, I decided to play as Spain. I've been talking about playing Spain for some time, so now it's finally time. There are multiple reasons why I decided to go with Spain. So to like mention a few. First, the previous uh, the previous series or the campaign was pretty difficult. And to be honest, I would like to relax a little bit this time. Maybe have some more room for testing with the new version. Because last time I had to play basically or like the game was dictating how I had to play. I didn't have any options. There was one way to win and I had to follow it. I didn't have any room to test anything. I just had to do it, what the game forced me to do. Here, we have it the new version. I would like to have a little bit more maneuvering room and I think Spain will allow me to do it. Spain can be quite strong if played properly. So I hope I'll be able to like use all of the unique abilities the way they're supposed to be used. Also, it doesn't like force me into one playstyle. Uh, with some saves, there there is clearly like the best way to play. Some are warmongers, some are focused on culture, some on science. With Spain, you are focused on faith. You can snowball faith pretty heavily, and the way you like make your religion then probably decides how uh, or which victory condition you want to go after. So. We'll see how quickly we can get religion. I would like to focus on faith a little bit more than usual. So we'll decide on how the game uh, is going to look like a little bit later when we see what's left, how quickly we can get the religion, what's the potential of our cities at that point, things like that, how the map looks like. So yeah, as I said, the game isn't basic, or the direction of the game isn't basically decided even before the game starts with Spain. So that's uh, uh, the the safe, and I try to keep all of the map settings as like standard as possible. Uh, as I said, the more standard I keep everything, the more room I think I will have for maneuvering inside of the game. So eight saves on the map, sixteen city states. All of this is uh, basically yeah, all of this is standard. No changes at all. Just decided to go with continents plus, so there, uh, so that we have um, the option for like a heavy naval war kind of game with uh, with Isabel's um, uh, unique unit, the Armada, that can be fate both. Uh, so I wanted to have the option. I don't think that we'll be really able to take advantage of conquistadors even on continents. 
But other than that, we should have the option to use all of the other unique stuff uh, pretty easily if we uh, decide to do so. For the advanced options, disable start bus because I wanted to have some more variety with the starting locations. Uh, no event systems, no ancient ruins, no tech trading, brokering, quick combat, quick movement, raging barbarians, transparent diplomacy. As you can see, it's as basic as it gets, basically. So, now, let's check the starting locations. Also, before we get there, we will talk a little bit about Isabella and uh, her unique abilities. So, um, we'll start with Reconquista. Only your religion can spread to owned cities and allied city-states. That's another thing that gives us the maneuvering room that we won't really be pressured by other religions that we don't have to necessarily be like the first to get the religion or start flipping our cities immediately otherwise we won't ever spread our religion <clears throat> so that's one of the reasons why i think we will be able to decide on the victory condition a little bit later we want to be pressured by like external uh, external sources as much as we would otherwise be gaining or founding cities generates faith and food i'm not sure how this scales if you get more later uh, you or it, it doesn't say that it would scale with era my guess is it does but it's just a guess i i don't know mm. But it starts really well. It starts with 60 faith and 60 food. So we will have pretty damn strong cities right from the start. And that 60 faith is almost enough to start with um, with a pantheon. So I will have to think about how we're going to start exactly. If I still want to go for Stonehenge. Or if we pass, start with, uh, start with shrine perhaps. Delay... A delay monument a little bit I haven't decided on that but again this gives us some more room that with most of the other saves we, we wouldn't have and converts them to our official religion well until we get a religion that's irrelevant may purchase naval units with faith I already mentioned that so in case we decide to go with armadas uh, that's gonna be a way how to get a lot of them faster which basically should win us the game i think if we do it right because armadas they come into play a little bit earlier than i think it's corvettes that they replace so it's pretty ridiculous how much of a power spike you get this way then the unique units conquistador a uh, medieval era unit that uh, specializes in scouting and colonizing advanced cities overseas only spend may build it replaces the knight they are super strong, and, and that is like a, another snowball uh, option that uh, Spain has. But I don't think on this map uh, we're gonna be using them uh, like a lot. On certain maps, you can just go completely crazy with conquistadors, and they can win you the game by themselves, by themselves almost. I don't think this is gonna be the game where conquistadors are gonna run like crazy. We may use one or two, but I don't think it's gonna be more than that. And Armada, uh, I already talked about this. Slow but incredibly dangerous ship. Only Spain may build it. Available earlier, but more expensive than Corvette. It replaces. Gains additional strength without full hit points. It begins with boarding one, boarding two. Just insanely strong. Mm, I don't think there is more to talk about. Just, just big, badass ship that comes into play earlier and just crushes everything. And we have a mission, which is a replacement for a castle. Gain three times the fate and gold output of the city, respectively, as the as an instant boost every time a citizen is born in the city. I think this could be pretty crazy. It won't be it won't be that much for like one pop, but when you have 10 15 cities and all of them are just keep pumping faith and gold it adds up pretty quickly 
So I'm actually quite curious how much we can get out of the missions from the first, like, first two lines. Then plus one production from Quarries and plus one fate from Haciendas. Haciendas are our unique tile improvement. And it's a lot of fate that we can get from, uh, from Haciendas because... Um, Maybe we can't build them everywhere, but we should be able to build like multiple around every city. So this could be easily like plus six, maybe plus eight fate in every city, just from Haciendas that we want to build anyway. So that definitely is great. And what I like is that we don't have to sacrifice anything. We want to build these buildings anyway, no matter what, or, or the Haciendas, and they just keep like buffing each other, it's just free yields from things that you want to get anyway. This, this, I can see just so much, so much snowball out of it for no investment, basically. Let's see how much we can get out of it in game. Maybe it's not as crazy as I think it will be, but usually I'm not wrong about these things. And then the last part, boost religious pressure and resistance of this city by 15%, doesn't require walls, well, that's irrelevant, you always want walls, uh, order to be built and can be purchased with fate. That's another pretty important thing, that we can buy uh, basically castles with fate, so we should be able to get them pretty quickly. Military units supplied by the city's population increased by 10%, doesn't really matter. And the one slot for uh, works of art or artifacts that also doesn't really matter that much. And then we have the Hacienda as uh, our unique tile improvement, which comes into play with Compass. So that's, uh, that's a Renaissance era that's quite late, but they're really, really powerful. Um, Wait, available at civil service? Why does it say prerequisite tech compass, but then it says available at civil service? Because I'm pretty sure, sure civil service is um, like a late medieval and compass is early. Or am I wrong? Is is it? Is, I might be wrong. Compass might actually be also medieval era. But then I'm going to trust the description. So it's available with civil service. So late game or late medieval. Um, cannot be built next to another hacienda. That's the same thing for most unique tile improvements. Provides food production and gold. Grants additional bonuses for every adjacent map component. So I'll have to experiment a little bit with uh, their positioning. But look at the yields. Plus they are getting the fate from missions. Um, we have seen in the, some other games how crazy the the, uh, the tile yields can be with Hacienda. So, yeah, just because of, of the Hacienda, the Spanish late game has to be insane because you are getting so much stuff from every tile. I'm really looking forward to, to testing these. Okay, so now, starting locations. Mm. This time I decided to go with three relatively um, like strong starts. The first one, like jungle chocolate start, probably the, the like the strongest uh, strongest resource to start with. I would say it has pretty ridiculous uh, starting yields and it gives a flat culture as a monopoly. That if you can get early, it helps so much. It's probably the strongest start, I would say. Uh, we can check a little bit more. There's another tile with chocolate. And then we can check these tiles. Here, I'm not sure where I would start. If it's going to be here so that we are right next to the chocolate. Or if I start on the hill for that one extra hammer. But then we would have to wait to get to the chocolate. So I think I'd actually prefer starting here. Usually, I... Uh, started on hills, but in this case, I think getting these yields immediately is so important that I would sacrifice the hill. Mm. Is there anything to talk about here? Not really. Also, there are quite a few grassland tiles and plains, so there is a potential for horses, all of the, like, the cattle, things like that, bison maybe. So overall, this should be pretty good. Also, we have uh, access to marble, uh, so maybe that could be relevant for some wonders. Although, 
I don't think that even with this uh, kind of star, like the classical and medieval wonders uh, will be available. <coughs> Excuse me. But we will see. We do have marble. Also, uh, starting next to marble, uh, there usually isn't that much marble on the map. So it increases the chance that you get the monopoly bonus when it still matters. Plus the monopoly bonus from marble works with the monopoly bonus from the chocolate. So yeah, probably can't ask for more from, from a start. This one's pretty damn good. Uh, maybe the one weakness that I can see is we don't know where the sea is, so it could take a while to get our first harbor. So maybe this won't be the game for Armadas. But who knows? It's possible the coast is just right here and it's not gonna be an issue. So that's number one. Then number two. Come on, come on, come on. Uh, it's been a while since we started with salt as the like the luxury that will or should give us monopoly. I'm pretty sure that it's salt here because we can see two copies. Um, we have a secondary luxury here. We have two lake tiles, and we actually have more than that. I'll show you. <laughs> I wasn't sure about this start. Well. It's obviously decent even before revealing more tiles. It was like pretty neutral. There was nothing that I would be super enthusiastic about. But then when I saw this, it's just crazy. It's five lake tiles in range of one city and possible four luxuries. We could start our capital here, get triple salt from the capital, get the gold, five lake tiles, and holy crap, that's some early game power. Also, the 10% food... A bonus everywhere from the monopoly another really strong monopoly i don't think it's as strong as the previous style but again really damn good early game snowball plus we'll also be getting a food uh, the food when we started the city so we should be able to get to like six size six seven maybe even eight uh in the capital pretty quickly i think i'll try to squeeze in tradition opener uh, for more food, more population. So this could be almost like one city start where we won't settle secondary cities until we get religion, perhaps, so that our secondary cities start with the religion like right after we settle them. But we'll see about that. It just depends on what we're gonna find around this. If we have like a, like Shaka, Monte, and uh, I don't know Rome next to us, then maybe we'll have to change our plans a little bit. Okay, so it's number two. I'm not sure about the start here. It's most likely gonna be on the salt. But I usually don't like starting on luxuries. Although here, this tile is just so good. It gives us everything that we can see that uh, probably is no other option. Okay, number three. Come on. So this one, again, as I said, all these uh, stars are quite strong. This one is probably weakest, but not by much. Um, I don't think I actually checked any more than this. And I already knew that I'm gonna uh, keep this started. What I don't like about this start is that we will start our capital most likely here and uh, uh, that's two tiles away from a coast. I just don't like starting only a few tiles from the coast. When I'm this close to the coast, I'm just trying to find a way how to start on the coast and have uh, have uh, uh, harbor as my capital. But here, I could move either here or here if I wanted to start right next to the sugar. But I would be sacrificing so much. I think I'm gonna start on the hill, that way we will get sugar, actually double sugar, copper and the lapis. So that's three luxuries 
uh, in range of the capital. We'll be starting next to the lake. Then probably the second trigger is quite far away. Uh, so maybe this start wouldn't snowball as hard as the other two. But still, starting with the 3 1 lake, still pretty decent. Let's actually see what else is around here. Oh, there is also another C tile. So if we start here, that would basically divide this continent. One, two, three, because we would be able to push the border all the way to the bananas. Then we would, uh, of course, have uh, the border here. So no one would be able to pass from one side to the other. And if we check, is this a hill? Probably not. No. There's nothing here at all. That most likely means that there is more sugar somewhere around here. This is a hill, right? Yeah. That would probably be another option. Really, really like risk it and check what is there around this style. It's possible that uh, this style uh, is in range of like more copies of sugar because we know that these two tiles are in range and then I'm like 99% sure there is more sugar here. So we could end up with the capital that would have like four copies of, of sugar or something like that. It's still in range of the lake but for now we don't see anything right next to this hill. Also it will be one, two, three turns before we uh, get our capital up and running. And we also don't know what else is here. We might be actually moving to to a neighbor. <clears throat> I think I'll play it safe. Start on the hill. Get all the luxuries around here. Then we explore a little bit and decide where are we going to settle next. This is uh, like a high risk, potentially high reward play. I'm actually tempted to do it. Because then we also could start with um, Goddess of Renewal. It's most likely there is jungle everywhere around it, or mostly jungle. So we could try some early game culture snowball with that. I don't think I would do Goddess of Renewal on this style. You really want to have jungles everywhere or forest everywhere around you with, with that Pantheon. Ah, we'll see, but it's most likely going to be the safe play and we're going to stay here. Also, it's very likely that there are going to be some horses around here. There could be, could be sheep. And once we research a few extra attacks, this side is going to look a little bit better. Well, we'll see. I think this is all for this episode. Uh, you can expect the next one on Thursday. I'm recording this on, uh, on Tuesday evening. So we'll have a whole Wednesday and most of Thursday uh, for voting. The voting ends when episode 2 is up and with that I'll also make the save files available. And yeah, I think that's all that um, I wanted to say for today. So I hope that you uh, like this episode, the whole idea for the series and that you're gonna join me uh, for the next episode again. Until then, have a good time. Bye bye.